Hi everyone, I'm Brenda, and welcome to Flipped and Restore It, where we do all things furniture, painting, decoupage, restoration, you name it. In this week's video, I'll be painting and decoupaging this mid-century Harris Levy's chest of drawers. The fabric we used is a Nigerian Ankara fabric with a beautiful batik print. I absolutely love how it turned out and it definitely speaks to my Zimbabwean heritage. If you want to see how we created this beautiful chest of drawers, then please keep watching. Liebes is a British furniture manufacturer from the late 1800s. And at one point, they were the largest furniture manufacturer in Britain at that time. During World War I and World War II, they assisted with the war effort by producing wooden supplies such as ammunition boxes and aircraft frames. Following the war, Liebes focused on producing cheaper utility furniture so that people could afford their furniture to rebuild their homes. But unfortunately, Lieber stopped producing furniture and closed in the late 1960s. The piece we are working on today dates from the 1960s, so would have been considered one of their utilitarian pieces of furniture. As you can see, it's in good structural condition. It just has a few superficial scratches and dings. The drawers are clean. They just need some nourishing and the handles are looking uh, rather sad. So we'll get started with removing the handles so we can give this piece a good clean. I did decide to leave the screws in so we could use them to pull open the drawers. I normally use a degreasing cleaner. Um, at the moment I've got Dixie Bell White Lightning on the go. I'm not going to bore you with the cleaning on camera. It's had a thorough scrub and I've rinsed it with clean water and now it's ready to go. In preparation for painting this with the paint sprayer, I'm using painter's tape to tape off all the drawers and then I'm going to stick some painter's plastic to the tape. I do this because I find that the uh, painter's plastic tape sticks better to tape than the furniture and it acts as a double barrier to the paint. What this plastic does is stop the paint from getting into the drawers when you spray the paint. I have my drawers open ever so slightly when I'm spraying my furniture, so this helps to just keep the paint out of the drawers. And don't ask why I'm wearing a mask here. I, I don't really know why. <laughs> I'm using wood filler to fill in all those scratches and I'm just using a, a wooden popsicle stick to get that wood filler into those scratches. Once the wood fuller has had time to fully harden, I'll go in with our orbital sander with 180 grit sandpaper to smooth out all that wood fuller. As you can see, I'm applying very little downward pressure to the sander. I'm letting the sander and the sandpaper do the work. This will help to reduce the number of swirls that you get by using an orbital sander and also helps prevent sanding through any veneer you might be working on.
I'm using a coarse sanding pad to scuff sand the drawers and the rest of the piece. This just gives some teeth to the surface for the paint to adhere to. Now it's really important to remember to wipe away your sanding dust when you're done. Otherwise your paint would be adhering to the dust rather than the surface of the furniture. And that is going to end in disaster. Your paint will scratch away, flake away. It just won't have good adhesion to your furniture piece. Now it's time to unbox our Obawa EPS 800 sprayer. It's an HVL P sprayer with its own air compressor. Um, we bought this with our own money, it's not sponsored or anything like that. I've been using the Wagner, um, I think it's the 590 sprayer until now, but I just found that I haven't really got on with it. So did a little bit of research on affordable sprayers and settled on this sprayer which actually comes in cheaper than the Wagner here in the UK. If you want me to do a separate video on the sprayer, uh, how to use it, how to clean it, things like that, then please do let me know in the comments below. The setup is very similar to the Wagner in terms of the spray gun so it wasn't a really big learning curve which was nice. For our paint colour, we've chosen Bunties in the shade Bewitched, which is a beautiful dark navy blue. I'm just watering it down here to single cream consistency. Before I start spraying the furniture, I like to check that the spray is spraying as it should on a scrap piece of card and then make any adjustments if I need to before I start spraying on the actual furniture. I did have an issue where no paint was coming out of the sprayer but after some quick troubleshooting I realized it was because I hadn't screwed the cap for the tin on tight enough so it wasn't fully airtight and it was allowing some air to come through and so the paint wasn't flowing through the nozzle but as soon as I tightened that all up it was all good. My initial impressions of the sprayer is that I love it. It, for me, is so much better than the Wagner. It sprays the paint on beautifully. I feel I can control the spray a lot better than I could with the Wagner. This is a, a big win for me, this sprayer. I decided to remove the drawers for the second coat of paint and I'm just numbering them as I remove them so I know what order they need to go back in. So just popping a one, a two, a three, a four on the bottom of the drawers. Then between each coat of paint and before I top the coat, I'm just giving it a light sand using 600 grit sandpaper to smooth it all out, removing any dust that may have got caught in the paint as it was drying. And then just a spritz of water from my mister bottle and a cloth to remove any sanding dust. And then I'm gonna go in with coat number two of paint.
And of course, don't forget to turn your piece over and make sure that the legs are fully painted to where the paint sprayer couldn't get to. most satisfying part of it all, the tape pull. It's time for top coat. I'm using Polyvine Crystal Clear Lacquer in a satin finish. And I'm going to add that to my sprayer with just a touch of the paint colour. This tints the top coat and because the paint is a darker colour, if you didn't tint your top coat, you might have issues with um, cloudiness in your top coat. So this just avoids anything like that. I'm using a filter just to make sure that no lumpy bits get in my sprayer. Also make sure you stir it really well to get it fully mixed. I'd love to know what your favourite paint sprays are. Um, if you let me know down in the comments below which ones you use, which ones you love and recommend. Now onto my favourite part of this project, which was decoupaging the drawers. This is a Nigerian Ankara fabric, which my friend Claire bought for me from Zimbabwe when she came to visit. I did put in a special request for some of these fabrics to be bought over and she kindly bought me over, I think it was four different fabrics. So I'm just waiting to use the other three in different projects. I've measured the width of the drawers roughly and now I'm cutting the fabric again roughly to size. I'm not cutting it down to the exact size yet because I'll do that once it's adhered to the drawers to get a really clean finish. And here I'm just holding up the fabric to the drawers just to make sure I haven't massively messed up in my cutting and measuring and that it will actually fit the drawers once I cut them down. Then I'll cut that piece of fabric into four separate pieces so that they can be attached to the drawers separately.
So to start, I'm going to lay down some Mod Podge on the drawer and position the fabric where I want it and push it down. And now Mod Podge is essentially a PVA glue, so you could use PVA glue instead. I've just got this massive bottle of Mod Podge that I need to get through. I wouldn't recommend using like a school craft glue. That's just not good quality enough PVA. You do need a good quality PVA glue for this to work. Now at this stage, I'd probably recommend giving yourself a little bit of extra overhang on the sides so it's easier to cut them back and you'll see that later in the video where I struggled with that because I'd laid it too close to the edge. If you put too much glue on your drawers like I've just done, just pop it back in the bottle. Make sure you're getting your glue right up to the edges so that your fabric is stuck down all the way to the edge of your drawer. And then just firmly press down on that fabric. And if you're not happy with the positioning of the fabric, you can just lift it back up and lay it back down and not worry about it ripping, which for me is a why fabric can sometimes be a lot easier to use than wallpapers. In terms of what fabric you can use for this process, I'd recommend cotton fabrics that don't have a lot of stretch. Those seem to be the fabrics that work best for this process of decoupaging it to furniture. Once you're happy with the positioning of the fabric, just put another layer of Mod Podge over it. And I do this to make sure that the fabric is really properly stuck to the drawers. Now is probably a good time for you to wipe away any excess glue away from the edges of the drawers, just so that there's less sanding that you have to do once the glue has dried. All you need is a cloth, some water, just to remove that excess glue away. Then rinse and repeat for the rest of your drawers. I'm not too worried here about lining the pattern up. I'm going for sort of an 
imperfectly perfect look with these straws. Now, once the glue has dried completely, I'd probably give it overnight. Pull the edge of the fabric away gently, just in case the fabric has stuck down over the edge of the furniture. Using a sharp Stanley blade or an X-Acto knife, just slice away the excess fabric running along the edge of your furniture. Most important tip I can give you here is to make sure your blade is sharp, otherwise you're just going to end up hacking away your fabric. Because of the glue, your fabric should have hardened slightly, which does make it easier to cut. This is why I say leave yourself a good amount of excess fabric because that will also make it easier to cut away. Not like me with this edge. I'll let you watch me struggle just so you know not to do that yourself. Also don't worry about the paint being scratched on the edges. We're going to touch that up later on. You don't need to worry about getting it perfectly neat right now because we're going to tidy up these edges with some sandpaper in a bit. The sandpaper will smooth out the edges and remove any loose fabric fibres. Have you ever decoupaged furniture with fabric before? Let me know in the comments below what it was that you did. I'd love to know what people have used fabric for on furniture pieces.
So I'm just taking 180 grit sandpaper and sanding down those edges smooth. Now, you might be thinking, well, why did you bother painting the drawer beforehand? And I like to make sure that there's a solid base color down before applying the fabric. I just think it helps to enhance the fabric. So if this was a lighter colored fabric, I probably would have painted the drawers a lighter paint color like white. It's a similar thing to what you would do if you were using wallpaper. Those fabric fibers are going to show what's underneath to a very small degree so if you've got um, the color that the a similar color to what the fabric is underneath it's just going to help to make that fabric look better so now i've wiped away all the sanding dust and i'm just going to apply another coat of mod podge to seal in the edges where we've just sanded it smooth and add another protective layer to the fabric if you notice any parts of your fabric that are not fully stuck down on the corners of the edges, just get some glue in there now and they'll be fine. So once that layer of Mod Podge is fully dried, I'll go in with the 320 grit sandpaper, which is really just to smooth it all out. So when you feel the surface of this fabric and glue, it feels nice and smooth to the touch. And now you can touch up your edges with your paint color. The benefit of having Mod Podge on the fabric is that if you get any paint overspill onto the fabric, you can just wipe it away with the damp cloth. The final step is to seal everything, the paint, the fabric, with uh, two coats of polyvine decorator's varnish in satin. These are the original Liebes handles, which I gave a really good clean and then sprayed them with metallic gold spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Whilst they were still wet with spray paint, I spritzed them with some alcohol and it gave them this sort of watercolour look, which you'll see in the final reveal shots. So there you can see it's given it this say like watercolor effect. If you want me to do a quick video showing you how to do that, then let me know in the comments below. And the final step is to use some feed and wax on the drawers to nourish them and get that wood looking really good.
I don't know if you remember the before, but here's a little reminder. And here's the after. I absolutely love how these drawers turned out. If you feel that we've earned your subscription, if you found this video at all useful or helpful, then we would love it if you would subscribe, give us a like, give us a comment down below, share the video. Every little bit helps with a small channel like ours. And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.